Do you have a need to get into the back end of your website? When I say the back end, I'm not talking about, you know, FTPing in to see the files or being able to go into, for instance, if it's WordPress or Joomla, you know, something like that, going into WP Admin for WordPress. I'm talking about right in to the server itself and run commands. Well, if you do need to do that, and there's lots of good reasons to do that, especially when you're working with hosting companies and you don't have physical access to the server, so you can't just walk over to it, you're probably gonna end up using Secure Shell, SSH, also known as Secure Socket Shell. What this lets you do is open a command prompt on your machine and send remote commands to the machine you're connecting to, in this case, your web server. Well, SSH is not hard to use, but it's not obvious when you are working with the hosting company. So we're gonna show you how to do it. In our case, we're using a company called InMotion Hosting. We've done this with GoDaddy and Bluehost and others. It's all roughly the same. And what you need to do is go to your hosting company's cPanel. Now, in my case, I've just gone to InMotionHosting.com in the top right-hand corner, I click Login and here I am. And all I have to do now for InMotion is click cPanel. It's the same for almost everybody. So it'll look a little different, the colors will be a little different, but it's pretty much the same. So go to your cPanel, and in cPanel, what you're looking for is Secure Shell. So what you can do is, it's right here, but you can also just do a Control F to find it, and just type in SSH, and you'll see this one of one here, there it is. So in my case, I'm just gonna click Secure Shell, click Manage SSH Keys. If there's already keys here, that's fine. You just create new ones, just ignore the ones that are there, don't stress about it. So let's go to generate new key. You need to specify a complex password. And because this is going to give somebody full access to the back end, you really want to make sure it's complex. So I'm going to click password generator and I'm going to highlight and copy it because this way I know it's complex. So I'll click, yes, I've got it saved. Even though I don't, it's just on my clipboard. That's fine, I'll click use password. It fills in both of them for me. It's very strong. Don't worry about the type or the key size. Both of these are just fine. RSA is fine, DSA is fine, and um, a 2K uh, key size is great. So let's just click Generate Key. And there we go. You think, I'm done. Nope, not even close. But it's not very hard, so let's keep going. What you need to do now is click on Manage, because what we need to do is authorize that key. Now you can think of this key as uh, like a user name. So let's, uh, but right now it's set up, but it's not activated. So Authorize, Activate. And now that is enabled. And now what you need uh, to connect to your server is the private key. That's the public key. What you need is the private key. If you don't understand public and private keys, don't sweat it. It's not very hard. Basically, you need the private key. So there's a couple of steps to get that. Let's go through it. Click View, Download. And you think, ah, I'll just download it. No, it needs to be in PPK format. What you could do is use a tool called Putty Gen to convert this file or in, in, in Motion's case, and in a lot of companies' cases, they've got a little tool just built in. So just use the built-in tool. Now, in case you're wondering if you're if that's your password or not, if I click Convert, it's just gonna work because it is the password that was just set. But watch what happens if I screw it up. So I'm just gonna type in some garbage here. Click Convert. It goes, oh no, that's not the password. That's not the correct passphrase. Yeah, not good. But what I'll do here is I will just paste in the uh, password that was my clipboard. Uh, but again, if I just click convert, it would have just worked. The point of this is that you can be confident you're doing it correctly uh, because if you don't get an error, it worked. So we'll click convert. It's going to create a uh, PPK file and we're going to download it. And there it is. In my case, it's uh, IDRSA2. It doesn't make any difference what it's called. You could name it I Like Cheese. It, it doesn't make any difference at all. Okay, now let's go back and uh, let's just look at the keys. So everything looks happy here, and it is. So now what you need to do is uh, get a tool that allows you to run the, this remote shell, this SSH. And that tool for most people is a, is a little product called Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. So you just Google Putty and you can download it for free. Uh, in the off chance you need Putty Gen, in case you didn't have the, uh, the uh, PPK uh, creator that I was uh, talking about, just type in Putty Gen and you'll get Putty Gen here and you can download it and run it. Again, very straightforward, not very hard to use. Okay, so download your Putty. 
install it. I already have mine installed, so I'm just going to click start and launch PuTTY. And what I need to do is I want to connect to my server. So how do I do that? Well, you put in the host name. You are, in my case, it's URTech.ca. SSH is typically on port 22. That is the list of well-known ports. And it's a bit strange, but not radically unusual that InMotion has changed the port that they're using, allowing PuTTY to come through onto 2222. Now, there's a couple of things to note here. One, you're gonna have to check with your provider, your hosting company, to find out what port they're using. The two common ones are 22, that's the most common. The second most common is 2222. But like all of these TCP and IP ports, it could be anyone. They could change it to any, any port they wanted. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing to note is that it is possible that you'll need to open a firewall port on your hosting company because port 22 or 2222 or whatever port SSH is on might be closed. Now, in InMotion's case, it's open. If you need to open the port, there's three ways to chat, didn't it? One, if you can get into your firewall, get into it and check. And I'm talking about the firewall on the web server. Now, it's nothing to do with your PC. Secondly, try it. See if it works. Thirdly, you can get a hold of your company and ask them. So you can get a hold of GoDaddy or Bluehost or Gator or whoever else you're using. Uh, so you may have to open a firewall port. In my case, I don't. I'm using shared hosting on InMotion. Okay, so let's get back to the point. We've got PuTTY configuration. There's the host name. There's the port. It's specified as SSH. Now what do I do? Well, you're not, you think you just click open. No, you don't. What you do is you go to connection, down to SSH, just expand SSH, and in auth, you need to find that IPK file, which is basically the, you know, the password file, effectively. It's the private key. So click on browse, find that key, which is my case is right here. Okay, so let's click open now. And boom, look at that. I'm already connected. So now I just need to enter a, a username. And you think, well, what username? It's not your WordPress or Joomla password. It is our username. It is not your FTP username. What it is, is whatever your account is called. So in my case, I'll show you in InMotion hosting here, you can see here, mine is URTech7. That is the name of the account that they have given me. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to PuTTY and I'm gonna type in URTech7. There we go. And you can see that it imported the uh, key and it authorized it, but it wants the password for that key. Fortunately, that's still in my clipboard. And when I say my clipboard, let me just show you, I'm running Windows 11 here, so I'll just paste it in. That's the password that I had for that key. You might think, well, I don't wanna type that in, that's a lot of complexity and I'm definitely gonna get it wrong. That's okay. In Linux and in PuTTY, you can press Shift and insert on your keyboard and it will insert whatever's in your clipboard or you can just press the right mouse button like I just did. And then press the enter key and bingo, I'm in. Now you think, okay, smart butt, now what, do you, now what do you do? Well, let's show you a couple of commands that might be helpful. The first is top. So top will show you the processes that are running. Now you can see here that I can't see many processes and that's because I'm using shared hosting. If I had a dedicated machine to a, a, a virtual machine, I'd be able to see all of the processes. So in my case, I have to rely on contacting InMotion hosting support staff to actually see all of the processes. But let's continue anyway, because there are these two processes here and we'll show you how to uh, play around with them. Let's press Q to get out of this and I will close. And to make this easy for you, I'll show you how to do this whole thing again, but quickly. So we'll go to PuTTY, we'll type in, in my case, my domain, .ca. we'll go to 2222, go to SSH, drill down into auth, find my key, private key, click open, bingo, type in my hosting company's account name. There it is. I'm just gonna right click. There we are, and or type top again. Basically, if you've got a process that's hung, including a user session, you can kill it. So in this case, I'm gonna press Q to kill, uh, to stop that uh, constantly updating table. Now, if there was a process here that I wanted to kill, you would I would type in kill minus nine, which is the don't screw around, just make it happen. And then you type in any process ID number you want. In fact, you can type in more than one, more than one of them. 
So if I wanted to kill myself, I could grab that one. And in Linux, I can right click on uh, any high text I highlight and it will actually paste it right into the putty session. Uh, so I can do that, but I could just type in, you know, other uh, PID numbers if I wanted. Right, let's assume that those are other PIDs. And if I press enter, it will kill all of those. Now I don't want to kill myself, so I'm going to back out of that. But that would be one way. I can also take a directory, which is a list in Linux. So you just type in LS. I can make directory. Right, if I wanted to, I'm not mkdir, sorry. Uh, if you wanted, I could remove a directory, rm, you know, whatever. Say I wanted to get rid of the C-SPAN folder, I could just paste that in, right? I'm not going to do that, but let's let's run the same, let's stretch this out and Putty will resize automatically. So watch this. I'll now do ls and see how it's wide. So that's handy. If the font is too small, you can click the uh, icon at the top left-hand corner, select change settings, go to appearance, click change. And uh, I like to use 14 and sometimes bold, as just click apply, and now everything's just bigger. So let's just take an LS again. Now look, this gets messy. Another handy command is clear. Right, clears the screen, keeps you logged in. Now, we're just gonna bail out of this. I'm gonna type, type exit. There it is, it's gone. Now you think, okay, but I've got that sort of open door left in my uh, C panel. I wanna close that down. Okay, well, you can if you want. Now in the interim, I created a second uh, a set of keys just to show you that it's not a big deal to have more than one. It's easy enough to fix. What you do is deauthorize them first. So click uh, manage and then deauthorize. If you have more than one of them, you can dump them all. That will turn them off. Just doing that will turn them off. Uh, but at this point you can go delete the private key. Bye. I'll do both of them. Bye. No private key in a public private key system makes for uh, useless keys. So that's, let's get rid of the public keys. There we go, and delete. Boom. No, I didn't have to do that. I could have just left those keys there. And to keep myself safe, I simply could have deactivated it, but this is a more thorough way to go. Okay, look, we'd really appreciate it if you'd click like and subscribe, especially if you uh, found this kind of thing useful. It really helps with Google algorithms. If you have any questions or concerns, put them in the comments section below, or you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thanks, have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.